Let's do a raid! Hello friends, my name is Brandon Dates and I am your humble narrator. Welcome to War Sim, a completely text-based game, which is interesting, something we haven't done before on the channel, but multi-user dungeons were uh, a big part of my teen years. I was 12 or 13 running around in text-based games, and uh, I believe it enhanced my love for reading and also enhanced my love for fantasy games, which this one is. It's about fantasy and kingdom building. It is fucking fantastic. Uh, we're going to start a new game and just see how it goes. It's all done through like the number keys and stuff like that. No mouse. So, so all keyboard controls, but uh, it's something that I'm used to for text-based games. So we will go ahead and try and select some races. As you can see, 77 races. Just fucking massive. Men, Cthulhu, Mutants, Druids, Dryads, Dwarves, Fawns, Fiends, Giants, Kappas, Lizardmen, Kobolds, Naga, Ogres, Orklings, Satyrs, Vampires, Warlocks, Snotlings, <laughs> Zombies, and Streamen, Oracles, Pyromancers, Aquamancers, Aeromancers, Oromancers, Lavamancers, Terramancers, Hydromancers, which uh, I don't know what the difference between an Aquamancer and a Hydromancer is, uh, Abominations, Scions, we could be absolutely any of these. Uh, I'm going to choose men for the first kingdom, which I think will be just fine. Uh, we'll choose zombies for the second one, harpies for the third one. Let's see what else we got in here. Uh, I think dwarves would be a good one. 13 is nice. Liches, those should get along with the zombies quite nicely. And uh, we'll start this up on easy mode just so I don't fail the game completely because, um, yeah, if you have only one land, then you will lose as soon as that land is taken and war in this game is extremely difficult you usually don't want to send your peasants soldiers and knights to war uh, much better to hire a mercenary group or get one of your vassal cities to do so so we'll start it on easy you are the ruler of the great kingdom of Aslona fighting against the young rebellion of Faradal, the Kinslayer, the Horde of Fo Fenor, the Overlord of all bandits, and several minor bandit gangs who pester your lands. The world is vast and complex, there's much to see and do, and little time to waste from the fabled ancient lands to the blood-soaked arena. These lands call to be united under the flag of Aslona. So this is largely a uh, text-based game, procedurally generated. The names of the enemies apparently don't change. I did one game before this, and they were indeed the same names. Faradal, the Kinslayer, and Fenor, the Overlord. So, uh, have fun fighting against those guys every single time. But I guess that's fine. It's just a name. You know, you can, you can imagine the face to be different. The race will probably be different, that's for sure. So, here we go. Generating all this stuff. Going pretty fast. Uh, seems to be blinking quite a lot as well, but... I guess that's uh, all to be expected. Oh, Dryads rejected, Nobles rejected, <laughs> Centaurs, Ents, Aromancers, Godlings. Godlings? We should have been Godlings. Baby gods? I thought that's what humans were already. We inherited the entire Earth. Hooray for us! Hmm, there are a lot of races to be rejected. <laughs> Look at all that shit. Mermen. We should have had some mermen. They would fight with the harpies, and then when they were both weak, we could take them over. And that's the the kind of strategy you have to think about in War Sim. It reminds me a lot of Warband. Uh, of course, Warband has graphics, but if if Warband was completely text-based, it would uh, be a lot like War Sim. So I really, really like this game. I'll wait for it to finish loading. Uh, there it is. <laughs> Didn't have to wait very long. The world is full of mystery and wonder. There are many people in this world. They are men, mire men, psychotic zombies, sacred harpies, titan dwarves, spark liches, goblins, and demons of the southern gate. So um, obviously they add like a little element to uh, the races that I picked, which is pretty cool. They don't necessarily have stats, at least not as far as I can tell. Um, their militaries are made of, up of different units, which have different combat points, sometimes higher, sometimes lower. So that is an interesting thing to delve into. But um, yeah, they don't seem all that different aside from just uh, the different combat points of the different units. You're invited to the royal crowning ceremony. Well, it's my crowning ceremony. I better go to it. Ceremony. <laughs> You enter the throne room for the first time as the ruler of Eslona. Crowds of people gather to see their new king. Hello! Hello, my name is Dayton Does. 
As you take a moment to observe the room, the High General of Aslona approaches. I hope you are well, my lord. I shall crown you as the one true king of Aslona. You gain this title by inheritance, as your father was the king before you, until his death by the cruel hands of time. Long may he rest. And that is randomized as well in the last, uh playthrough my father was a mad king who ended up getting locked in the dungeon and uh, I ended up freeing him and he ended up backstabbing me because <laughs> he didn't trust anybody because he was crazy so I guess there's a good reason that he was in the dungeon but I was like he's my daddy I have to let him go uh, this time my daddy just died of old age which is a much much better way to go so I can rest easy with that I crown you as king of Aslona long may you reign hail Dayton does hail Dayton does hooray so uh, here is your, your main menu, you're going to be seeing this after every single turn. You can recruit and sell troops, hire mercenaries, hire staff, arrange the diplomacy, uh, which is pretty good. That's how you get uh, kingdoms to be your vassals and stuff like that. Change laws of the lands, you can change taxes and things like that. Kingdom upgrades, obviously uh, a little too expensive for us right now with only 10,000 gold, but eventually that's something that uh, I hope to get into. Got the throne room, which is where you can go to uh, muck about with your subjects. It's actually pretty fun. They come in with a lot of different ideas and uh, games, and sometimes you get uh, emissaries from other nations that want to just say hello to you, and you're like, oh, thank you, be on your way. Or you can execute them, or you can lock them in the dungeon, but <laughs> I don't, I don't want to do that. I want to be a good king. I don't want to be the mad king. They, they end up locking up Dayton does. Um, the arena, you can bet on fights there. The Royal Bank, you can ask for a loan up to 5,000 gold, which isn't that much. Uh, and I assume it has to be paid back, but I don't take out loans in real life. I ain't gonna do it in this game, most likely, unless I really, really need it. You can visit other buildings once your, uh, other buildings are built. Right now, we don't have a library, artifact hall, explorer's guild, training ground, or a hall of order, which is not good, but those are all unlocked in the kingdom upgrades tab. Uh, you can... Get your kingdom reports, which right now there's not going to be anything because we haven't done anything yet. Uh, general income, expense, law, recruitment, caravan, wages, major event, and battle report. So uh, caravans are another thing that comes through your throne room. So I'd say the throne room is like one of the most important things if you're going to be playing War Sim. And then finally you can explore the realm, which is also extremely important. You get a lot of random events that way, and it's pretty nice. So uh, I don't necessarily need peasants, soldiers, or knights, and we don't have any bandits, and there's no uh, goblins with the goblin slaver, so that's just fine. We'll probably have to wait till next turn. Uh, once we start to lose some of our our soldiers and things like that, then I'll have to hire people. But right now we got a pretty good amount, so I'm not too worried about that. But I do want to hire a mercenary company. So let's look at the cheapest one, the Dread Knight Tribe. They are... 44 Dread Spearmen. Okay, this group is available for hire. They charge 306 fee for invasion to cover the risk involved. Well, let's assess them. They're a group of well-trained warriors. Sometimes it says, like, fairly well-trained. Sometimes it says untrained, stuff like that. So, uh, they seem like a pretty good, uh, group to pick up. Scrally and the Miner. Miners have big, strong arms. I'm gonna hire this group. So they are mine now. I can provide them soldiers, order them to attack a faction, fire the group if I start running low on gold, uh, request them to disband, attempt them to assimilate into my nation, which uh, will remove the gold cost, so that's a pretty good idea, but first you have to get them to trust you, I assume, and then uh, assess, are they any better now? No, they're just exactly the same, as much as I expected. So let's look at this extremely expensive mercenary group. Um, 406 steel sheriffs so yeah this is definitely a larger group um let's see how they stack up they are a group of well-trained warriors as well so let's try to find somebody that's not so well trained hmm assess the night hogs well-trained warriors everybody seems to be well trained well that's good i guess if you're trying to uh oh strong black circle our highly impressive group of hardened elite veterans of war Holy shit, 305 of them? We should have hired them, but yeah, it would cost a lot of gold, and uh, I'm not making that much gold at the moment. So yeah, you can see, uh, you probably want to assess all of them before you uh, make a choice, but e it, it is what it is. I made my choice. Unimpressive bunch of recruits. Yeah, good thing we didn't hire them. So, not bad. 
I'm relatively happy with my purchase. You can see my gold's gone down in the upper left, but that's relatively fine. We've got a uh, staff to hire. Spy masters will tell you the size of the enemy armies. Court jesters don't really seem to have a point. Uh, they just seem to like to fart, which is fine. Champions will go into combat with your people, which is relatively nice um, to give you a boost of power. So let's see about some spy masters, shall we? Loren of Fort Northwatch. Hmm. I've read almost every famous paper on spying and even written some. You'd be stupid not to hire me. Don't call me stupid. I am the king. 195 gold. Okay. 98 gold. See, look at this. Th what a deal. Are you kidding? I am highly regarded by kings and queens of the realm for my work. I have traveled three days to serve you. I beg for payment of 98 gold per season. I like him. He seems humble, humble Sir Rigmar the Acrobat. An acrobat seems like a good job for a spy master. So let's see this last one. Sir Darius the Lion. I have read almost every famous paper on spying. Yeah, indeed. So let us hire Sir Rigmar the Acrobat. And there he appears in my re retinue. My retinue. <laughs> I just call them my circle. My circle. Three potential court jesters also come to my court. Let's see, Gorin the Warty. I would go as far to say there are few who can outmatch me in comedy and I specialize in everything. I will brighten your court to have one such as me in your presence. I demand payment of 75 gold per season. Hmm. Let's see, Corpse Grinder. Wow, what a name. <laughs> I, f I can fart in three colors, and I specialize in orc jokes. It would be my honor to fart for you. <laughs> oh, that's me making me laugh already. 66 gold per season. Usually I just hire the cheapest one. Oh, 26 gold per season. Jesus Christ. I like to look at my life through a lens of foolery, and I specialize in everything. Please hire me. It was prophesied by ancient texts. Well, you're giving me quite a deal, so I'm going to hire Tool Deck of the Lost. And uh, we can't afford any champions quite yet, as you can see, so we'll save up. Oh, we could do Nerbium the Roach. Let's let's check out... Uh... Oh, I guess I hired him already. <laughs> well, he's, he's one of my people now, so hopefully we have a little bit of gold left. That'll do just fine. <laughs> We're running a little bit low, uh, so now I'm going to check out the diplomacy. We can see about the different uh, kingdoms, goblin kingdoms, Independent territories is where you want to go if you want to ask people to be your vassal. Uh, Viper, Granite, Communes, Lava Kingdom. Lava Kingdom sounds fucking awesome. It's full of spark liches, which doesn't make a whole lot of sense. But again, procedurally generated, so about what I expect. Um, our faction relation is negative eight, so they're probably not going to say yes to a, a vassal. Let's see, Viper, Granite, Commune are Titan Dwarves, which is kind of a, a misnomer, isn't it? Anyways, let us uh, attempt to vassalize this kingdom. Your emissary carries a request for the Viper Granite Communes to become your vassal. Sir Gralim the Holy says his kingdom will fall before becoming a vassal to you. Oh, well. And he doesn't like that our faction relationship's gone down by two. Whoopsie doops. Well, let's uh, see. Meyer men. Psychotic zombies don't like us. Hmm... Not good. Nobody seems to like us, really. How about the, uh, the Sacred Harpies? Will you become a vassal? No, that's not even an option. Okay, so no vassals for now. We could, uh, try and give them some stuff and bribe them, but mm, not quite yet. Let's see. Bribe the Bandit Horde to stop attacking me? Bribe them to disband? Hmm, let's see about this bandit horde. Bandit horde originated as a small group of bandits. As time went on, this group proved to be more ruthless, and there were none among them more ruthless than Fenor. Fenor and his gang destroyed, enslaved, and united their way to having the highest bandit gang, the biggest bandit gang in the civilization in the realm. What is wrong with my brain today? I can't even read. And soon they became a very big problem for civilization. Oh, that's where I got civilization from. So we'll have to watch out for the bandit horde. Fenor and his bandit horde. Um... But first things first, I need to uh, make some more money, so my public opinion is now 35, but as I start changing the laws of the land, that is going to be going down, because I'm going to put some taxes and subsidies on the people. Gambling tax, sorry everybody. Banking tax, sorry everybody. Land tax, sorry everybody. Subsidizing the arena will remove the gambling tax, and uh, subsidizing the militia will cost even more money. It doesn't make any money, so... 
I'm just taxing my people quite a little bit, but that's absolutely fine. Recruitment and training, you can uh, declare forceful enlistment, which will bolster your force, but also make people not like you as much, obviously. Goblin policies, mercenary policies, social policies. Social policies is basically just alms for the poor, and it costs you money. Prison policies, so you can decide what to do with goblins, mercenaries, and prisoners in those, uh, in those ones, which right now I'm going to keep it. Just uh, take them as slaves. That's fine. We're not going to execute anybody. We're not going to free anybody. We're just going to amass some slaves because that's what you do in the Middle Ages, bruh. Uh, we don't have enough for kingdom upgrades, but we should visit the throne room probably. 29 people waiting to see me. Oh my god. Tell the guards to keep out the rabble. I don't want to see the rabble. Okay, five people. That's much better. Uh, send in the next visitor, please. You are visited by a sacred harpy warrior from the faceless wind communities of Glathier who seeks refuge with you after being accused of murder. Well, you're a murderer, you're not going to stay with us. I'm going to return her to the faceless wind communities and hopefully increase our uh, relations with that. The faceless wind communities send thanks. You're very welcome. Now execute that murderer. <laughs> Four people left? Yes, send in the next. Mm hmm. Sacred harpy warrior. Uh, seeks refuge having been accused of murder. Did you not hear about the guy just before you? Back! Back with you! <laughs> uh, next visitor, please! Oh my god, seeks refuge after having been mistreated. Why? Why? What is happening with the, the sacred harpies over there? Oh, he's just been mistreated. He's not a murderer, so I guess I can accept him. The sacred harpy bows to you. Thank you for your allegiance, young one. Two more visitors. A shady man arrives and invites you to play a coin flip game. Um, did I not tell the guards to keep out the rabble? I'm not I'm not doing anything with you. I have a gambling tax, don't you see? You should pay the tax just for being here. <laughs> Next visitor, please. Final visitor. You're visited by a Meyer Berserk man from the Black Bannered Solnit of Korgak who seeks refuge with you after having been sentenced to death. Um, well, I'm going to send you back. I don't know what you were sentenced to death for, but it can't be good. They seem a fair people, those Meyer men. And they send thanks. So we're doing good work here. Um, tell the guards I'm no longer seeing visitors. Yes, I may sit on, sit on my throne in peace. Uh, let's call a meeting as well. Hmm, so my four staff arrive and take seats as the meeting begins. And I'll say, I want to be more liked. How do I get more subscribers, you guys? How do I get you to like, comment, and subscribe? <laughs> if you make decisions in the interest of the people, they will like you. Oh, thank you, High General. That's fantastic advice. Spy Master, I'm uncertain what to say, okay? I don't suppose a spy would know how to get people to like him. Wait, yes he would, because he's a spy. Execute this man. <laughs> he's not worth the money. Court Jester, give some money to the poor. This will gain you, gain you favor, but it'll also cost me a thousand gold per turn, sucker. I don't want none of that. Ooh, head diplomat, old Kroll. Look, his ASCII character, ASCII character, I guess, <laughs> has a, a top hat, and uh, that's what's going on in the in the top of the screen. If you weren't aware of that, I just became aware of it about five seconds ago when all the faces started changing. <laughs> um. Make sure the people have their freedom. Things like forceful enlistment do not help. Okay, well, I, I've done that so far. Hmm. What other sources of income should I be looking at? Conquer more lands. These will earn you more in almost every stream. Betting in the arena is a good way if you know what you're doing. Named heroes can be a risk, but some fights are obvious, like a gladiator versus a, pre a peasant. Bet everything. Of course, the, the spy would tell me to bet. The thief. Rumor has it an old book containing a sack that produces gold coins infinitely, slowly, but infinitely. Hmm. Interesting, court jester. Might you find this book somewhere for me? Open up trade with anyone you can. The more trade routes you have, the better, even with small villages or the wagon man. Well, I was hoping the wagon man would come to see me in my court, but he did not. We will end the meeting. Thank you. Meeting's adjourned. Everybody go home. Uh, I'm now allowing visitors again. Well, no one's here to see me, so that's fine. We're done in the throne room. Uh, I'll skip the arena and the royal bank for now. Let's explore the realm just a little bit, and we'll explore the northern lands. Yes, one to explore. We've got the slaver's fort. Hmm. You wander aimlessly. Okay, that was that was not a good <laughs> turn. 
But we do have the Slaver's Fort, so we could go visit them. Uh, you arrive at the Slaver Fort. There are thousands of men here, slaves and slavers. The army is a sight to behold, and nearby many merchants and lords are pre present and bargaining for slaves to fill all manner of roles. So we could buy slaves, buy slave soldiers, buy the slavery operation if we had enough, but uh, we don't, and then attack them. They've got 1,010 men, so it's probably not a good idea because uh, you can be attacked back in in uh, in when you end your turn. So all of the guys that are out attacking are not going to be there to defend your your lands, which is extremely important. I might like some slaves or slave soldiers. They're relatively cheap, so let's buy some slave soldiers. We'll buy 200 of them. Very nice. And now they only have 300 available. We'll see if that goes up on the next turn when we go back and do some more exploring. Ah, pretty good, pretty good. So now we can end our turn. I've spent most of my money, um, so we'll see what happens. We'll see what happens if it goes up or down. My king, what are your orders? We are at war with quite a few people. Copper killers are bandits that we're truced with. Hate of fathers are bandits we're truced with. That is interesting. Um, we're not going to launch any attacks this time around. Basically, the attack just involves sending an amount of peasant soldiers and knights, and uh, you can either raid, skirmish, or uh, try and get... Basically, a skirmish is like uh, poking at them, trying to reduce the power of their military. A raid is plundering different uh, items, gold, and stuff like that, and then the actual full attack is where you take their lands, but that usually involves some heavy casualties, so you will want to outnumber the opponent considerably. Uh, we are not going to launch any attacks today. No thank you. Lots of shit happened. You received 124 gold in rents. You enlist 59 soldiers from your 10 lands. Gambling tax, general tax, yes. Give me all the gold! <laughs> So we gained uh, about 3,000 gold this season. That's rather nice. Rebels enlist one new soldier from their six lands. Bandits enlist 32 new bandits and six new warlords. Oh my god. Well, that spy report is a, a helpful thing. You can see how fast the other kingdoms are growing compared to yours. Hmm. Viper granite communes invaded the lands of the Steel Watch. Crut attempted to raid the lands of the rebels but were unsuccessful. Hmm hmm hmm. Arena reports, Kordog the Scant defeated Wall of the Hydra. I don't know who either of those people are because we didn't visit the arena to see who the champion was. But that's just fine. So here we are, back in the main menu again. Um, and you basically just do exactly what you did before. So we're going to do a little bit more exploring. They do have a few more slave soldiers, which is pretty cool. But uh, I don't have the extra money. I want to stack my coins up just a little bit. They've got Fourth Nor Fort Northwatch, which is full of bandits. Might be good to plunder. Let's have a look at that. We can attack the fort or buy the fort. It says it's well defended, so I'm not going to bother with it right now. And again, we wander aimlessly, wasting that second turn. I don't like that none too much. We should explore some other lands. Maybe not wander as aimlessly. Maybe it's easier to see stuff on the grasslands. I'm not sure how that goes. So we've gone about 20 turns. I think it's about time for an update. Uh, obviously we have 38 lands compared to this 10 that we started with. We've actually crushed quite a few factions as well. Rebels are no more. Bandit Horde, no more. Goblin Kingdoms I've kind of left alone. Uh, independent territories, some of them were fucking with me. Uh, we couldn't negotiate with the zombies at all in the Glass Frost land, so I decided to crush them. I have allied with the Harpies, uh, which I don't know how that's going to work. I guess you could still win the game with an ally. Um, I wanted to turn them into vassals, but I can't seem to do that for some reason. Maybe Harpies are just against that. I don't know. They, they seem badly tempered. Uh, Viper Granite Communes have basically left me alone this entire time, so uh, I've left them alone largely. And then Lava Kingdom decided to start some shit and go to war with Dayton Does, so they're defeated as well. So two of the uh, two of the independents are gone, um, and the rebels and the bandit horde are also gone. So we're not being attacked very much anymore, which is a really really nice thing. I've got so many fucking troops and slaves, and um, I have crushed a couple of mercenary companies on accident by basically sending them into a fight that I knew they couldn't win, and then they all get slain and. Uh, next turn, another mercenary company comes to replace them, so I guess it's not so bad, but uh, let's have a look at these 
bloodied nocturnal renegades. They've got 254 bloodied pikemen, and they are a group of elite veterans, so it might be good to hire them for at least one attack, and maybe we'll take some, uh, some gold from the Goblin Kingdom or something like that. Uh, green men have been attacking me, so we'll go after Green Man, although I do like him in the It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia. Thank you, Charlie Day. <laughs> um, yeah, we were allied with the Copper Killers and the Hada Fathers when we started this game. I didn't happen to notice how that's gone so far, but uh, we will attack these green men. We won't use any blue tree, which is basically a berry that increases your battle strength. Uh, I keep buying it every time I find it in the royal court. Somebody sells it to me. I'm like, all right, dude, give me some of that. All right, an invasion's a wise tactic. It will show them our true might, and we will take their lands in the process. Obviously, some of my uh, council members are different as well from the first turn because a lot of them came to me and said, look, I made enough gold. I want to retire now. And being the great king that I am, I said, okay, you may do so. And their battle score is 83 compared to the 1,029 of these uh, these mercenaries. So, yeah, we didn't lose anything. They got absolutely smashed up. And the green men have been crushed. A lone knight who has dedicated his life to their eradication joins your cause and pledges his life and honor to you. So, plus one opinion and plus one knight. Crushing the larger kingdoms obviously gives you a lot more uh, gold and things like this, but... I'll take plus one knight. Join the, the 60 or 70 other ones that I have. Thank you so much. So green men are now crushed on our diplomacy screen. That's not our diplomacy screen. Yes. Green men are gone. I think they were a minor bandit group. Yes. They should be gone, I think. Yeah, they have total land, so they'll probably register as gone next turn. And hey, the fathers, I guess we're not... um. Oh, we are allied. We have a truce with them, so I'm not going to screw with them too much. They'll uh, go and weaken the other lands for me. So we've got 39 lands now. We're looking pretty good. Um, I don't think in the first turn we visited the arena or the bank. We also didn't have any kingdom upgrades. Uh, now I have 55,000 gold, which is enough for a few upgrades. I have bought a few upgrades as well, basically just the training ground so far. Um... <clears throat> Could upgrade the barracks, try to train some tribals into soldiers. Enter the barracks, the buildings used for arming and training troops ready for combat. The barracks is well stocked but is not capable of facilitating certain types of training due to limitations on the structure. So I could upgrade it but uh, not quite yet, that's going to take all of my gold. And really the game is just getting interesting. Um, easy mode makes it so it ends extremely fast, obviously. Um, probably if I'm doing a hard mode playthrough. Obviously, you start with a lot less troops and have to be a lot more careful. You're not going to be this far into the game by turn 20, but it is a, a rather a rather nice thing just to explore the game doing this. Uh, let's bet on a fight. I don't want to bother with the grand, grand champion at the moment. Goblin Warlord versus a blind peasant. Okay, sure. <laughs> let's, uh... Yeah, bet on the Goblin Warlord for sure. Blind Peasant trips a little bit. Goblin Warlord and Blind Peasant get caught in a parry. Goblin Warlord manages to break the parry and gets a good hit. And the Peasant's defeated. <laughs> sad. <laughs> That's so sad. Um, Goblin Berserker versus Titan Dwarven Warrior. I will bet on the Dwarven Warrior since he's probably got uh, a bit more defensive tactics than the Berserker. Berserker's just like go all out, you know? And let's see, how much gold should I bet? I will bet 500 gold. All right, here we go. The crowd roars. Oh, oh Goblin Berserker's defeated after an incredible strike from the Titan Dwarven Warrior. Fantastic, so I got a thousand gold from my bet. Really, really nice. Uh, I could buy the arena at some point, but 2.5 million gold is a lot to stack up. Exploring the realm, obviously we've been to a lot of different places, seen a lot of different things. Um, Greenskin Mining Company, we've actually um, been able to take a tribute from the mine, so they are increasing our gold every turn, which is super sweet. Um, they're also coming to my court quite often asking to sell the mine to me, and I'm like, no bro, <laughs> just keep working it and give me the tribute. Um, old Ruined Fort, let's see. 
You find the ruins of an old fort, it's unknown who once held it, but it has long since been abandoned and left to fade into the snowy wastes of the north. Well, let's rebuild this shit. You prepare the fort for construction and send a, for independent contractors to source materials and laborers to begin work. Alright. Soon to be constructed, the contractors and laborers surround the fort and begin making camp and storing materials. So, let's see what happens with that. Uh, there are quite a few different things to explore in this game, and I'm always uh, having a good time figuring out what comes next. We should explore probably the eastern lands. We've not explored this so much. Got some sandstone ruins, and of course we wander aimlessly, which seems to happen quite a lot, but that's just fine. Old sandstone ruins, it's unclear which once stood here, but it is a fortress or town or something else entirely. The only thing that is clear is that time has swallowed it whole and left little behind. Aww. We can't even rebuild that? I guess you don't want to be rebuild all these ruins. It, it's fine. That's, that's good. Let's see. We should deposit something in the Royal Bank. Do we earn interest on that? That would be an interesting thing to find out, wouldn't it? Um, let's deposit it all. Sure. Why not? Um, and then we'll withdraw like a thousand. Because, you know, I, I hate walking around with empty pockets. That shit's no good. We can inspect the bank. We could raid the bank. Oh my god. You can rob the bank of your own kingdom? What the fuck? Ah, uh, 324 guards and gains many clients and customers. I'm not going to raid them for now. Uh, maybe on the next turn or something like that. Could be quite interesting, I do think. Uh-oh. Something outside. Let's get a barbed wire tattoo, bro. Um, Alright, we're looking pretty good. I'll call that a turn. And let's attack the uh, Great Goblin Kingdoms. One of them, at least. And I pick the Iraq. Iraq! And we'll invade them, of course. So you can see I have a lot of slave soldiers. I usually like to fill up on those because it doesn't really matter if they die. And then a lot of soldiers as well. Knights? Look at all that. Jesus. I, I don't generally lose combat anymore. Um, just because I have so many so many peeps to send. Meyer men, Meyer warrior, berserkers. These are all people that came through my court. Oh, I forgot to visit the uh, the court. That's fine. There'll just be a shit ton of people there, because the larger your lands get, the more people come uh, to see you in your court. Nirbium the Roach, obviously still with us from the first turn. He's not died yet. I don't know if champions can die. Do they just increase the combat power, or... Uh, I don't have too much experience with that. But we will send Nirbium on the raid. Thurnic the Glutton can stay at home to defend. We won't use any blue tree. Uh, but we will take some of their land, I'm almost sure of it. We've got 7,302 battle score compared to their 910, so it's not going to be pretty for them. Uh, prepare for a battle that will soon take place as you mark a, as you spot a strange cave with markings and bones laden all around. The enemy emerges and the battle begins. Boom, 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 boom. So many warlords killed. <laughs> they lost 188 troops and we lost 9. <laughs> We could see what we lost. Slave soldier, slave soldier, slave soldier, slave soldier, slave soldier. So that's just fine. Our uh, our regular S soldiers are good to go. The slave soldiers, I guess they don't care if they die. Like, they're slaves and stuff, so it's probably better for them to go on to the next life than stay here serving where they don't want to serve, probably. But we did, we did a good job. Um, yeah, stomped them out real good, got a little more land. Public opinion will go up once we crush them completely, but um, yeah, that'll probably take a bit of time. We're working that gold back up. Let's see what happened in the northern lands with the ruined fort. Nothing quite yet. That's fine. I'll visit the throne room. We've got 18 people. Oh my gosh. Uh, recently came to odds with the ruler, Titan Dwarven Warrior. Welcome to my kingdom, sir. Uh, sentenced to death. Ooh, you're going back. We are allies, and I'm not going to risk that. It's one of my only independent allies. Next visitor, please. Offers to reveal a location in the north for 447 gold. I will give it to you. I could also force him, but that's not very nice. That's not a very good king thing to do. Um, recently came to odds with the ruler. Welcome, Meyer Berserk Man. <clears throat> Traveling Game Master wants to play a game called Sudden Death. No, I don't do that shit. I don't gamble. I got a gambling tax, okay? Why are you not paying right now? 
He's been sentenced to death. We must return the Mire Berserk Warrior. It is what is good for him. You must pay the cost for what you've done. Advice for 17 gold? Sure. The Thick Blood Tavern holds more rough and violent men than the arena on tournament day. An honest man avoids the tavern like a plague. Well, yeah. <laughs> if you want a drink, you probably got some problems, you know? Nobody goes to the tavern for funsies. Not like real funsies. Unless they just don't know what to do. Unless they've been brainwashed by the media, bro. And they're like, drinking and throwing up in the gutter's fun. <laughs> no, it's not. Uh, Harpy Warrior was sentenced to death. We gotta send you back. I'm so sorry for that. Uh, Wise Man has some free advice. Sure. Black Market's probably a good place to own, but make sure you protect it. Bandits won't take kindly if you're ho to you holding it and will want it back. Well, uh, we've crushed most of the bandit hordes. <laughs> so please don't worry. Nine more people. Oh my gosh. Um, Sacred Harpy Warrior wants to fight for me because I seem interesting. I am. Welcome aboard. <laughs> Uh, more advice, there are some some who support Faradal the Kinslayer claiming he's the only way to restore the Esselonian Empire. Well guess what, Faradal the Kinslayer has been slayed by Dayton does his hand. So suck it, suck it hard. Seven more people, let's do it. Oh, sudden death again, get out of here. Go on, get out. Sacred Harpy's been mistreated, okay, I'll take you. Um, ownership of the mine, no. Why do you keep doing this? Every time I, he comes here, I, I must refuse him. I'm so sorry, but you're making me free gold. Why am I going to give you gold to make me more free gold? You're making the gold already. It would probably make me more gold, but I don't want to pay for the investment, to be quite honest. Um, Sacred Harpy Warrior came to odds with the ruler. Welcome aboard. Three more people. Was accused of murder. Goodbye, Twi Titan Dwarf Warrior. Uh... Okay, well, we'll, we'll play the, the coin flip game with this guy real quick. Heads, you lose. Tails, you win. Tails, you lose. Tails, you win. Okay, thank you so much. Now please leave me. <laughs> uh, advice to share for 10 gold? Sure. Orbs of chaos make the world slightly more chaotic when placed on top of iron. I haven't found any orbs of chaos. All I know about is blue tree at the moment, but that's fine. Uh, let's see about our staff and champions. Obviously, we are filling up just a little bit. And I have hired Rexus the Severed as the Game Master. He was basically a, a sudden death guy that came into my court. And I was like, hey, why don't you stay here and I'll pay you. And he's like, cool, brah. And that's how that went. <laughs> uh, I don't think we have enough for any more kingdom upgrades. They are quite, uh, quite strong. More heroes in arena fights might be good. Monument to champions. That seems nice. But I ain't gonna bother with it. Um, we've explored the realm, I do believe. No, we haven't. Alright, let's check this out. Nothing more to find here. How about the Strength Stone? What does it do? You approach the rock the Northerners call the Strength Stone. A stone with the more ancient patterns on it. They say if you rub it three times, no more, no less, you will gain great strength for a time. Okay, one, two, three. Did, did we get great strength? I don't feel any stronger. Maybe it's only my warriors who got stronger. Hmm, curious. Let's check out diplomacy. Uh, how many how many lands do the Goblin Kingdom of Kroot have? They have seven. The other one has nine. So we are going to keep attacking the Iraq. And um, yeah, I want to whittle them down just a little bit more. And the best way to do that, mercenary company. They'll, they'll do some good work for us, I'm sure. Hire for one attack. Go here. And invade. Use blue tree? Nope. Oh my god, they are going to get crushed. <laughs> 88 versus 1099. Well, at least we'll see a mercenary company uh, get destroyed, I guess. So here it goes. Invasion was a failure and your men were slain. Wow. That's terrible. Towering Northern Vanguard are destroyed. Mm, whoops. <laughs> oh well, that's, that's kind of what I was talking about earlier. But it is what it is. Let's uh, go to the next turn. We'll get some more money. And I can also attack those, uh, those goblins myself. Never send a lady to do a man's work, huh? So we'll send a bunch of slaves. <laughs> Never send a bunch of slaves to do a man's work. Uh, 21 knights. We'll send 50 bandits, 
150 gob goblin tribals, 100 goblin berserkers, and some of the Meyer men that we got. Uh, spark warlocks, spark liches, you can stay near beam, the roach will go. Alright, let's see how it goes. Well, we did uh, soften them up just a little bit with the raid from the independents, or the, the mercenary companies rather. So, I guess I can thank them for a job well done. I'll put some flowers on their grave or something. Um, we lost 23 men compared to their 161. Most of the people lost were slave soldiers, so no problem there. Victory's victory. Gained one more land. And obviously nobody is attacking me because they see my fantastic military strength. So, um, yeah. We're doing pretty good, all things considered. I'll go back to the northern lands. The ruined fort is still under construction. That's unfortunate. Um, let's try the western lands. Explore a little bit. You find a lost knight wandering aimlessly. When he sees you, he falls to his knees and vows to join your service. Wonderful. Good idea. Oh, and there's a gibbering monk over there. You come upon a gibbering monk sat upon a carpet uttering nonsense. There's a small basket that contains various coins. Uh, give him one coin, steal his basket, or kill the gibbering monk. I'll give him a gold. Sure. The gibbering monk grows a huge forehead with three brows. <laughs> what is happening? The gibbering monk seems unreactive. Uh, come on, do something else for money. The gibbering monk makes his face go brown. <laughs> okay, I'll see you later, guy. <laughs> what a weirdo. There's a lot of uh, ASCII art that you can pay for in this game. It's not really anything too magical, but... um. It, it's an interesting thing. It's a little something extra to do. Let's watch the magic fish performance. Da 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 da. Thank you for your ten gold. <laughs> See what I mean? Not great. You'd think decaying demon performance. That's gonna be way better because it's fifteen hundred gold. Guess what? It's not. Oh my god! The demon. He's decaying, and it looks exactly the same every time. So uh. <laughs> I don't know why I paid another 1500 gold, I guess just to demonstrate, because it's lousy. We'll press any key to continue, and uh, I'll ignore my throne room this this time around. Let's keep on working on the, the Great Goblin Kingdom, and we will invade their lands. 440 soldiers, 2795, and then I don't really need to send anything else, I'll save everything. I'll just let them stack up, you see? Uh, Nearbeam the Roach can go. Thernic the Glutton is fat, so he's not gonna go. I keep putting Y and N, because that's what it wants when it asks if you're going to use Blue Tree in the battle. So N, N. And we outnumber them hugely again. We're crushing them up so nicely, obviously down to a 676 power, and even more losses this time around. Yes, more land for Dayton does. Wah ha ha ha! And we are making a great amount of gold. 22,000 per turn. That is super nice. Um, let's see. I really just want to see what's going to happen with this uh, ruined fort. But I guess it takes more than just a couple turns to get there. Hmm. Sad. Let's see about mercenary companies. Distinguished soul hounds. Hmm. 409 distinguished axe lords. Let's assess them. Highly impressive group of hardened elite veterans. Well, maybe they could uh, take on the the Goblin Kingdom. At least I hope. Maybe it'll get us some free land. Yeah, they... For some reason, their, their score has gone back up to a thousand. So the veteran warriors might get crushed this time around. Nope, it was a success. Wonderfully done. Let's do it again. I want to smash this kingdom up so bad. Uh, use blue tree? Nope. Just, just keep, keep pushing it. Keep pushing it and push their shit through. There we go. And one more. Bam. Oh, that invasion was a failure. Oh, we pushed the mercenary company too hard. I'm sorry, guys. They were a good mercenary company, but now they're, uh, they're no more. They're all dead. Whoopsie doops. Um, let's end the turn again. <clears throat> we'll go ahead and attack the, the kingdom ourselves. Just need to push a little further. Push a little harder, and we're gonna do great. 
We're gonna do great things. 33, and then all this I will save. I bought a lot of goblins and accepted a lot of uh, strange people into my court. But it makes me strong. It makes me nice and strong. Look at that, 11,000. That's fucking crazy. I bet we get no casualties this time around. Okay, we lost five. But we uh, smashed them up really good. I think they're learning a lesson. Indeed. Hmm. Aslona invaded the lands of Iraq. Krut raided the lands of the Black Bannered Solnet of Korgat, which I'm not really sad because uh, the the Mirmen and the Titan Dwarves both refuse to ally with me since I keep slaves. So that is an interesting thing. Some some races have different uh, different policies than others. Harpies don't see a problem with taking slaves. Dwarves and men do. So that is what it is, I suppose. Viper Granite Commune defeated Hyda Fathers in a skirmish. Maybe I should attack the Viper Granite Commune because we're allied with the Hyda Fathers. But we are currently working on, uh, I'm working on something, okay? Don't, don't talk to me right now. Tattooed Mercenaries, what a name. Um, impressive group of elite veterans. Okay, I will hire you. Help me out with this Viper, er, <laughs> fucking Goblin Kingdom. Yeah, and they do outnumber. So there we go. Invasion was a success. Wonderfully done. Maybe we can do it one more time. I think they only have one more land left, so they should be defeated after this. Boom. Success. Oh, one more? Okay, we can do one more. <laughs> Why not? Nah, not using blue tree. There we go. Hmm. They've got more land than I thought. But it's all coming my way. Which is the nicest thing. Let's let's check them out. Yeah, they got one land left. So that is going to be nice. We're going to smash them up real good. Old Ruin Fort, still under construction. Not finding anything new in the near north. Um, oh, 12, head north. I see. 21 to head south. Wow. I didn't realize that before. I guess I hadn't discovered enough locations to do that before. But yeah, 13 locations out of 30, so uh, there's much to be explored still up there. Um, I think we're basically done. I just want to stack a little bit more gold. So end the turn again. We'll take down the... Uh... Oh, we got the Iraq instead. Was that the right one? I can't recall. We've got some peasants in the kingdom now, though, which is a good thing. Uh, yeah. Everybody needs some peasants. You can train them up into, uh, into badasses. <laughs> yeah, that's what I call them. They're soldiers, not badasses. The knights are the real badasses. Let's send Nirbium the Roach. Same as always. And we outnumber them nicely. Boom. Dead. You've slaughtered the defenders of the goblin capital. The men rush into the keep to find several surly creatures awaiting them. So this will increase your casualties by quite a bit when you uh, finish off the kingdom, but that's okay. It's all worth it. And there we are. Invasion was a success. King Gurnak was killed, and uh, we only lost 10 men, which was really nice. We lost a soldier in that last fight, but really cool. We smashed up a bunch of ogres and cave trolls and gained that last land from the Iraq. So there we go. It's copious rivals praise you, many of them now hailing you as their true king. That's right, I shall unite these lands under the banner of Dayton Does. We've got uh, plus 5 opinion, plus 200 soldiers, 25 bandits, 100 tribals, and 400 peasants. So super nice, that is going to bolster my soldier counts considerably, even though my soldier count is already fucking huge. Anyhow, friends, I've been Brandon Dayton, your humble narrator. Thank you so much for watching. This has been War Sim. Please don't forget to like, comment, and or subscribe if you did enjoy the episode. Don't hesitate to uh, go down in the description. Click on that little link that will take you over to War Sim. You can buy it on Steam for uh, about five bucks at full price, which is a pretty good deal in my opinion, especially uh, if you love text-based adventures as I do. Let your imagination run wild with ya. Anyways, thank you guys so much for your support. Uh, 
our channel is growing bigger and bigger every single day and I definitely definitely want you guys to know that it means the world to me uh, I do put a lot of time into these videos and I hope that it shows through um, just as the creators put a lot of time into this game and that shows through as well I would like to see a few more random events added a bit more um, specific stats, stats for the races and stuff um, but that may, might, might make the race picking screen like a little bulky. So I don't know. Maybe it's a good system. Um, maybe I don't know what I'm talking about. I probably don't. <laughs> Anyways, I hope that you'll like, comment, and or subscribe. If you did enjoy, friends, I will see you next week with a new game. And uh, if you want to see some more of this one, please do let me know. I would be glad to uh, get some more War Sim going. We might even do some more text-based adventures if this one takes off in the way that I hope it does. Anyways... Thank you once more, and I'll see you in the next one, friends. Until then, bye bye. One, two, three, four. Goodbye, goodbye. See you again. Goodbye, goodbye. See you, my friends.